Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and hope you are doing pretty well. So, before that we really start doing our things on this video, I would like to tell you something that I really need you to do. Before that you continue watching this video, I need you to like this video immediately because I believe it's kind of useful content and is helping some people out there who probably don't find my channels. And if you don't like it, the algorithm of YouTube will downgrade and downvote this video and it won't show up to anybody out there and will be dead and uh, yeah a lot of people won't benefit from it so please please go ahead and give a thumb up for now that you could follow a link and you, that I could really um, enjoy putting out this content and uh, yeah so this is uh, the episode number nine and in today's video I would like to um, introduce to you um, and actually show how we can implement this uh, product grid or product element or card called whatever you want and transform what is currently ugly and not beautiful into this stylish and kind of modern with all these transitions uh, UI you can say that so uh, let's start and see what we can do and how we can do it all right so as always uh, i'm using here my kind of newly preferred ide vs code so he's uh, still good still doing good job and so now and uh, i'm using uh chromium or edgium or Microsoft Edge, the new version, which is really good. I really like it and it stick well with me. All right, so our very first and other ways is to understand how our element is built. So start your inspector, pick the selector tool and pin one of the elements. So first of all, first of all we have an article here with a specific class. The, the first one is what's really interesting us because the second one it, it has this GS uh, period which has a convention telling that this class will be only used for JavaScript operations so just ignore that and moving back after copying product miniature here and moving back to our IDE just to find where this uh, template or this file does reside so as always as I said before I am uh, I'm showing you I'm coding and I'm uh, kind of acting like I'm new by and I don't really know where this kind of template does reside and I'm kind of new by right so here uh, in VS code I click on template folder and I will uh, click here find in folder and I'll be paste that class so it does immediately show me one a single result which is product.tpl and we have two results actually uh, yeah we have two results inside that file and the first one is the one that we are looking for and the second one is simply with a GS prefix all right so this is our target file pretty cool now the missing brick into our system is to find the CSS and uh, all the assets actually that is generating that UI so as always we have to go to our devs folder uh, under the themes and CSS and go to theme.css or scss and here I'm looking for the product.css so I'm supposing that we'll be finding that specific file so I do dumbly product here and there we go we have component dot or component slash uh, products right so as always if you're not sure that you are doing things the right way and you are on the right path you have to do some dummy things like editing a background to red and a border to something really ugly like a five pixel solid um, red why not let's go green for now all right and don't do like I did don't forget to start your server so you could use any server you have in your machine and you have to go city themes and classic and the underscore dev and right there you have to run npm run watch so just run it once and forget it so I just remind you this is a, a simply a configuration uh, yeah, it's a configuration but actually uh, an implementation of webpack that it will compile our assets whether scss 
or JavaScript into a kind of bundled way, just compress everything into a single file and deliver it to the front end. So here everything is green, I mean everything is good. We can test and I do prefer always using Control F5 because these modern browsers are kind of lazy and don't want to refresh things again all right so it seems like something is not okay because i don't see my changes and what is going on so let's search for products it seems like there is nothing there about products which is kind of disappointing because here i'm expecting to have a class or element with an id product but it's not the case so actually if we go to product page, we could find this. So let me go to the product page, for example, this one, I'd open it into a new tab and I'm expecting to have that ugly style that we did apply. All right, so we have a little issue that we'll be fixing that. So we don't need to display that widget of the slider right there. So here, let me revert that. Controller five as always, and we should see these ugly borders there we go so these are the borders meaning that this dollar id or dollar product or hash product will be only on the product page and simply if you inspect your page and as i said previously you always have to look to the body id which is here product and here we have body with an id index all right so we are on the correct file but the wrong let's say place so ignore this very first block and let's search for another good selectors so let's go back to this one to the product.tpl and let's see if we could find the product miniature all right so let's type miniature i'm not good with that uh it's miniature miniature all right so it seems like it's not here miniature all right it's a bit awkward that there's no class defined it that way so let's see if we can find another property another element with some stuff defined for it inside our file so remember i'm a beginner here and i don't know pretty much not too much about prestashop and i would like to really do this over and over because not everybody is a professional all right so by searching for this thumbnail container we have one result inside featured product.scss okay which is a bit weirdo because normally all the products into our template should share this uh kind of layout all right so what about going to the categories page like men's for example here I'm expecting to have a list of products that look exactly like this, a collection of grids. And there we go. So we have uh, our, uh, let's say, card product that exactly look like the one we have on the home page. So I would like to inspect it and I kind of see where the style is coming from. So what we have here, we have product thumbnail container stuff. This is not what I'm looking for. This is our element here and we have product miniature defined somewhere so i'll be picking that class name sorry and i'm moving back to my ide here and paste that so again it's coming from the featured product all right so it's a bit confusing for me to see um can i share it style place it into um kind of module specific file all right, so featured module or featured product is a module in PrestaShop. So uh, I think what it was better that we have um, related stuff to product inside a product uh, or product grid or something like that. But anyway, we could deal with that. So here our work will be inside the featured products and we could start exploring this little file. OK, let me put this to the side, hide that and we start doing our things all right so we have the products we have a featured products product accessories and product miniature so all the three elements are actually uh, modules in prestashop meaning that we can conclude that all these three modules will have the same exact layout so if i do update one of these elements then all other one will be affected all right great no 
let's go back to our home page and open the other let's say it's design to the side and try to understand what's going on here okay so the very first thing that i do see here is that we have this kind of cool hover effect so when i do hover it does show another image but here when i do hover it does show me nothing except this ugly quick view stuff that i could turn off through the admin panel all right so our very first thing is to add that hover effect and it's kind of tricky so uh, there is no javascript involved we won't be using any javascript but except a pure css so here i would like to inspect this image so by looking here we have a beautiful emg src stuff like that and it's inside a thumbnail uh, product thumbnail all right so closing these two we don't need them back to our product.tpl and we have actually um two images one is inside the if the product has a cover and the other one if doesn't have a cover it does kind of render uh like a default image for our product okay so what i'm going to do here is simply play around with this anchor tag so instead of one image we'll be having a two image and here i'll added a little bit a little comment saying this this is oops this is the hover emg okay formatting there we go and this will be the second image and no actually i, I made a mistake here if it has a cover Wait a second. Did I made a mistake? Oh no, it's correct. It's correct. Yep, this is the the real product image and this is the default one. And let me actually pick this default one that we could make difference, right? So let me remove this little image and let's test this out. So refreshing now we should see two images or at least inside the source code we should see two SRCs right inspecting back and we have the two images as I said so what about changing this to opacity zero and this is the normally that should be the second image but it's not there so what about picking any image from the web and let's go um, uh, EMG Oh, there is an EMG placeholder somewhere. Yeah, I do remember there is an API doing that. Placeholder. Uh, come on. Just give me a rectangle. Open that. What about uh, picking a rectangle image? So 250, 250 by 250. Let's do 250, x250. There we go. That's okay for me. So here, instead of this dynamic stuff, let's put it hard coded. Okay, refreshing. And we have the image that is actually hiding our original image. All right, so now we have to introduce some CSS classes. So I do class, let's call this the hover EMG, all right? Then we have to go back to our CSS and search for that class thumbnail, product thumbnail, which is actually, um, where is that? So just have to pick the name correctly, product thumbnail. Thumb, oops. Thumbnail, product thumbnail, this is it. And we have the IMG and I will add another close here saying that if it's hover, so by default it will be opacity set it to zero and transition all, let's add a quick 300 millisecond. What about playing that to all the images? Actually, that would be better. And now we have to add the new uh, at hover effect for this product thumbnail. So. Uh, somewhere here or oh, let's place that here because it's related to the parent I'll do hover here when I do hover you have to do EMG um, that um, we have to do not uh, well we have to make well, let's add another class here to avoid this 
Uh, so here we'll do class equals to main img. All right. So the img, the first one that it has, come on, move back, that he has main, so it will become opacity set it to zero. And the other one that it has the class set it to um, hover, hover img will turn opacity to one. All right, now let's give a quick click to our terminal if everything is green, okay, cool. Now let's refresh this out. So control F5 as always. And let's see if that will work. Okay, it seems like it's not working. And we have simply to look inside and uh, let's turn this into a hover here. So when I do activate that hover, it seems like there's no property applied. So did I make a mistake? Product thumbnail which is what is the one so product thumbnail which is this okay so when i do hover well well it's not taking any effect so i end hover img ah, okay i forget to add this yeah it's okay yeah sorry my bad okay refreshing the page now and that should work for sure there we go beautiful great Okay, now I would like to to grab some beautiful image because the one I used look really shitty. So copy link image and moving back here and yep, there we go. Okay, that's a demo. Wow, well, it's looking beautiful anyway. There we go. Okay, okay. Pretty nice. Just one thing I would like to increase the transition time to uh, 400 or 500 milliseconds that could give that fade in fade out effect beautiful one so there we go and yep there we go this is actually much better and I can say that I will accept this no I cannot send that to our customers because he won't pay me my bills right so we need really to place a valid image for our product and to do that we need to grab this customer stuff right here and do actually um replace this dummy url with this one all right so we have some alt stuff here about seo which is really important to have but uh, I won't really bother a lot. So we have that a full image URL, some stuff. So what about picking this and place it as, um, as let's say, uh, second image? Because here, as I said here, this normally is used by some JavaScript library, which is basically the, the preview or the full, or whatever, I forget the name actually, which is actually this quick view. So when you click on that, you will have the full image displayed. So let me re put this back here. So product image or large cover, whatever. So let's put this here. There we go. Okay, just have, we have an extra curly brace. Good. No, let's refresh and I hope that I won't break anything. Good. Okay, so you see that we have that transition, that fade in, fade out is working well. Now if I click, I'll be redirected to the product page. If I click on a quick view, it's actually, yep, it's working. Pretty cool. Now I have just to refresh because I think I broke the session. Great. So again, if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel, please. Elsewhere, there is no need really that I keep bossing my head on producting this content the time that nobody is watching it, nobody is liking it. All right, back to our course. Now we need to get rid of what? Uh, of this quick view, we don't need it. So we have to do this through the admin panel and it must be oops why is not scrolling it's inside the shop parameters product settings and we have an option called quick view that we have to turn off 
All right, so we have to wait here because as always, wow, I lost the session, which is cool. Thank you, Windows. Stay connected, stay logged in. So we need to find that uh, quick view here. Quick. Oh, it's not here. Well, I think uh, we need to Google quick view Presta Shop 1.7. Uh, disable quick view and hopefully there will be some good answers works perfect oh this is the the bad way uh, I think they take off the options because I do remember that inside prestashop 1.6 this was available inside this page all right so let's accept that prestashop 1.7 is uh, I cannot say that it's, uh, it's full version because developing or developing is ongoing and um, it's not like final version so it's normal that some features are no more there but anyway let's do that the hard way so inspect as always and uh, let's go to where is this UL flags what is this I don't really care about it and I really care about this too. so quick view we need to find that uh, stuff okay let's get rid of the hidden there we go this is our beautiful class that I will hide so select that and kaboom there's no need to you buddy thank you for your service okay good good no let's refresh and see so when you do update the template you don't need to use the controller 5 right it simply will recompile and will save you time. All right, all right, good. Now, what else we could do? Uh, we need to kinda get rid of that background that is here uh, and the box shadow just to emerge the, the thumbnail box inside our page. So we need to find this box shadow, get rid of it. So it's here. So where we can find this, all right, no problem. Copy paste that back to feature.product.scss and search for box shadow. It's not here, not not this one. Add include box shadow thumbnail container and have to move back and see if that's the one. So yes, it is. And we have to simply put that into a command. So here it's simply um, a mixing that is defined somewhere else here that's normally inside the variable dot, dot uh, scss okay that's quite enough to hide it and to get rid of that uh, box shadow so let's take that away pretty cool we start getting really beautiful here right so we are getting closer and closer to our end results all right so 23 minutes what about taking a break guys and uh, finishing this into the next episode so thank you for watching and as always please if not subscribe to this channel don't hesitate or be ashamed to subscribe and also as i said in the previous video or on the beginning of this video please please consider leaving a thumb up because that will help this video and this channel to grow and that i could help more people inside this word because I know that Presta Shop is good and there is no so much people producing content that can uh, help you to learn and how to deal with Presta Shop. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to watch the previous episode of this series and the next one. See you and peace.